Welcome to Layers Licensing and Games Podcast. I'm Mitch and this is Ratchet and today we're joined by Erno Kiski who is from Game Refinery. Uh, he's based in Finland and he's been chief game analyst for Game Refinery for over seven years and often provides industry commentary and insight into the mobile games market. So today we're really excited to speak to Erno, uh, just going to recap some of the trends that we've seen in IP licensing in 2022. Thanks for joining us, Erno. Hello, hello, uh, uh, everyone. And thank you very much. Uh, fun to be here. Great to be here. Always nice to talk, chum, you know, industry chats uh, anywhere. So love, lo- love, love to be here. Awesome. Well, welcome. Um, so just maybe to get everyone up to speed, could you maybe give us a bit of a, a high level summary of Game Refinery, um, what you guys do and, and your role at Game Refinery? Yeah, yeah, of course. So uh, Game Refinery, what we are basically, uh, we are a market data provider. So uh, of course, everybody knows the kind of like a revenue download, like market data providers. Uh, and that's often where we are compared at, but kind of like our main key difference, we are also actually offering, you know, uh, revenue and download and this kind of like a little bit of performance data, but that's never been our kind of like a focus and not our like bread and butter, but where we have been always been focusing on actually is the game research on a deeper level. So what we have, we have actually a teams of analysts who are actually, you know, playing those games and, you know, deconstructing the games into their bits and pieces and, you know, features and, and updates and, you know, live events and so on. So we are following games on a little bit more deeper level. So we are deconstructing them into the features. So you can research some like feature level data, find about a specific game feature, for example, or find out what is about specific genres where we have our own genre taxonomy that goes much more deeper than, for example, the App Store, App, App Store taxonomies. Uh, and then uh, that's the kind of like the main idea. So basically, as a customer, you want to find out what's going on. Of course, everybody still plays the games and that's never going away. And the value of that never goes away. But we are there to help to kind of like... Uh, go a little bit deeper when you're doing the market research, like what are the features that are trending? What kind of, uh, you know, events different your competitors are having in your game? What seems to be performing when you benchmark that data that you saw that, okay, they added, I don't know, this battle bass feature in this update, for example, or they had this type of an event kind of like at this point of the uh, point of the game's life cycle, what happened to the performance uh, data as an example. So yeah, basically a market data provider uh, that gives this kind of like a deeper game level insights for the uh, different companies. So you've got a, you've got a team that gets to, to play games and, and uh, say that yeah. they're re- researching them all day. Oh, that sounds pretty fun. Um, I guess... Yeah. Yeah, 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 it's it's fun, but it, it's work uh, after all. Like after <laughs> after a while, you know, it's gets it's not just for fun. So, but yeah, we do we do have people who can do that as their work for sure. Cool, cool. Uh, well, maybe I'll, if I if I need a new job, I'll I'll, uh, I'll reach out. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm curious. Like I've, I've noticed insights from Game Refinery around IP based games or like usage of IP in in games. Um, and and I, we actually spoke about it recently. I was on the Game Refinery podcast, so it's it's nice to kind of go the other way. But um, I'm curious, like, how do you get that data? Was going to be my first question. And is that you know, do you go through and kind of figure that out manually and, and, and understand like what's happening there? And why do you think that specifically is worth focusing on? Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, like our data comes like half of it. This is automated, so we have like automated algorithms and for example, the performance estimations and we have like a motivation estimation. We had this, our, our own motivational model, uh, which kind of like uh, uses also automated data that we have, you know, done surveys. And then based on other data points we have, we have algorithm that we can give kind of like a estimation based on the different games motivational models. So we have the kind of like automated part, but actually a big part of our kind of like offering and one of our key differentiators always has been that we have this kind of like a more personal that mm. we actually have 
we go on a level that you know you cannot get automated we you know write about about those games and so on and when the company was founded i wasn't uh, one of the founders but i was actually one of the very first uh, employees uh, of the company and especially back then nobody was doing it like this and nobody mm. had this kind of like a deeper insights about games and then when you were doing market research you were like okay it's interesting that okay this game is doing okay but then you didn't get any idea that okay what actually have well you can look at app store mm-hmm. update and that's about it but you were not able to get any kind of like a mm-hmm. uh, data uh, on that level so that's the kind of like the key thing for us always being you know go deeper go on actual you know game design and game you know feature level and look at that uh that 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 data so yeah basically it combines the automated Mm -hmm. data and then it combines the actual manual uh kind of like a research that we do and then provide through our SaaS SaaS Mm -hmm. service yeah Yeah, cool cool. you're probably good good to mention that yeah we are a SaaS service as well so we're not doing just you know uh, uh cases or like mm-hmm. consultancy cases and stuff like that but we have like our main product is a SaaS service uh, gotcha. yeah yeah so so a software that anyone can can use um are you mostly used by the games industry or is there also you know users and, and customers that are looking to understand the games industry whether they're brands or, or something similar yeah there well definitely uh there there is a use case for different kind of users our kind of like a core you like audience is definitely game developers like okay. 95% i would say but then there are you know chances of like for example investors or even like you know mm-hmm. licensors or like who are license holders to research that okay what kind of things kind of, kind of like a better understanding that okay first of all like how many licensed games for example there are mm-hmm. currently in the market in let's say top 200 best former in games or then you know go on the other side that okay somebody approached us on i don't know about the kind of like uh making a partnership for an event for their game like and then try to understand like how different games are doing it and uh, how they are performing and so on so definitely like there are use cases for other kind of like um, uh, different types of uh, mm-hmm. people as well but yeah mainly like 90 95% is the game developers are like core audience and, and yeah. are main users yeah it ma- makes sense and and you mentioned the the method of getting the the data and the research is both automated and kind of manual to make sure there's enough quality and depth um what's you know going back to that earlier point what's been the uh, the primary reason or the driver behind, you know, the insights around IP, is there a reason why you've focused on that or, or, or have that as part of uh, what, what's out there? Yeah, uh, well, uh, IP is, of course, it's uh, for our data point, it's just one of one of the kind of like, we are tracking over like uh, over 200 different metrics uh, mm-hmm. and do, do different parameters per different games. So IP is just one of them. But naturally, if you're talking about games, uh, if if it if the game has an IP or it doesn't have an IP, it's quite crucial on everything, you know, mm. from marketing and even uh, to the playing of the game. It can be a big, big factor. So we thought that this is definitely something that we want mm-hmm. to also include in our research and and kind of like a give idea that okay, actually it might explain a little bit more that okay this game has a, this IP uh, and then it might explain the performance in that sense, even though it would be like an exact copy, let's say, on a feature level uh, than than another game, for example. So definitely that was the key thing to kind of like uh, try to find out and differentiate the kind of like impact of different IPs uh, uh, because, yeah, it does have an uh, impact for mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. Cool. So uh, licensed IP 2022 felt like a, a pretty big year again for IP in games. Um, was that the case? Uh, keen to kind of recap some of the trends that you've been seeing at Game Refinery. Um, you know, what's going on in the space? Is is IP moving up or is it is it down? Yeah, uh, definitely moving up. Uh, well, w- maybe maybe I could, you know, pinpoint here one like key factor on the whole market, whole mobile game market, what kind of like a, is the reason, the main reason why, you know, the the IP is up and why the kind of like uh, value of IP is up. So in the mobile game market, if you're familiar with it, uh, the, there was like a massive, massive privacy changes that Apple did uh, called uh, ATT. So 
basically back in the days uh, it used to be that they have this idfa kind of like a data tracker that okay they are able to track that which users are which and you know then that that data point was used to kind of like a give uh, advertising uh, uh, to different different players different uh, kind of like a users and that was removed with the kind of like att pop up they had a like privacy change for apple and then what that did for the whole mobile game marketing is that now targeting this hyper hyper targeting got much much more difficult so uh, because back in the day you could make a game for a little small audience uh, that you know that for example monetizes extremely well but it's not really kind of like a wide audience game that it doesn't have such a wide appeal but you had that sniper that you could target the specific audience that you know that monetizes really well. You could make a game based on that and you know find mm-hmm. your niche much more better. But now when that is basically gone uh, to some extent uh, and the kind of like uh, targeting and the marketing side is more you know using a shotgun than a sniper to be honest. And then that kind of like a, how that ties into the IP mm-hmm. is that when you have an IP in your game, when you are working with a kind of like a something already familiar uh, in your game, naturally the kind of like organic benefits are there. So the reach of audiences uh, trying to find new new type of audiences, you know, the, the brand is marketing for you, for example, if the, you're partner with the game and so on. So the kind of like an organic uh, uh, kind of like a way to differentiate in the highly, highly competitive market uh, is, is much, much more bigger. And there are the kind of like a big benefits from there. And then if we go to this year, so to, uh, 2022, and we look at, for example, new game launches, because that's the, the main, you know, uh, time when you need to, you know, scale your game, find the audiences for your game and so on. And now you don't have that kind of like a, uh, super targeted possibilities anymore. And it, now if we look at those games that were launched actually uh, in this year and that had like were able to scale uh, to the kind of like a top game, so whatever, like top 200, for example, actually a lot of, lot of those games actually had an IP. So we were talking about, of course, like Diablo Immortal, Marvel yeah. Snap, Apex Legends. Mm. Uh, there was a, like an MLB uh, basket, uh, sorry, baseball game. Uh, the Office, uh, kind of like an Isler game. They used that TV series uh, brand on top of that and so on. So mm. actually, if we compare that to the kind of like a time before this kind of like a private, privacy changes were introduced, uh, it's quite clear that kind of like uh, the amount, the share uh, of the games that have an actually an IP is much, much more bigger uh, mm. after the changes. And especially this year, mm-hmm. uh, overall, the new games, there are much more fewer because, uh, yeah, scaling a new game is harder than ever. But uh, we can see the kind of like a correlation of an IP also uh, becoming kind of like a big thing for a kind of like a branded, totally kind of like a licensed games where the kind of like a brand is kind of like a uh, on on top of the on top of the game overall uh and when kind of like a, talking about the whole product it's a, the, the, it's totally br- uh, branded product yeah so it sounds like since these changes have come around from IDFA and ATT i think is is the takeaway that like ip is being used for uh for games and and, and for apps in general to stand out not only in kind of marketplaces like the app store but also to better target their advertising so that you know they can try and align with that audience with that fan base is that is that the main uh way that you see they they you kind of utilize that ip yeah yeah i would say i would say overall like uh as the games has to be more widely appealing Mm. now uh or like the the, like the niche Mm -hmm. approach doesn't work anymore Mm -hmm. then when you have an ip it unlocks much more bigger audience much more maybe like even players or new new type of audiences that were not familiar or haven't played this type of a genre genre before as an example mm-hmm. so then tapping into that uh, mm. getting that organic wider appeal uh, it's definitely something like post uh, idfa mm. that is really helpful and beneficial for for m- many companies and then yeah of course like you mentioned you know the uh, ju- not just you know having an ip and you know 
differentiating in an app store, but even the kind of like uh, the the benefits of having a, let's say, the the IP holder, for example, advertising your game uh, through the social media mm, and so on, and mm. using that as a kind of like a marketing channel as well to try to find find the audiences. So yeah, that's that's definitely the the, the key thing where I see uh, because of course IPs have been in these games always and and, mm. and has been before IDFA and they were also the same benefits were there, but now I would say the kind of like a the importance and the like the ben- the size of the benefits mm-hmm. so to speak uh, are bigger so uh, in this new new landscape uh, the kind of like the benefits that can be achieved uh, seem to be kind of like even bigger than it used to be yeah it makes sense and and you you touched there on kind of like a wide range of ways of working with an ip from kind of you know large ip to getting support from the ip on on how they promote it i mean the the other things that you mentioned there were kind of different levels of working with the IP. So I, I think, yeah. as you said, like there's something like the Office game. It's a whole game based around that licensed IP. And then you've got, you know, other things like Apex Legends or, or, or other games where they're like, like Cookie Run is out there, you know, collaborating with, um, mm. you know, with, with external IP or musicians or artists. So are you seeing any change or any difference there? I think, I mean, like, 10, 15 years ago, maybe things were more around kind of like licensed IP games. Is, is that changing? Is that just how it feels to me? Or like, what, what are you seeing in terms of like the way IP is being used? Yeah, definitely. Uh, that kind of like gets us to the kind of like, kind of the second way of the IP utilization and how that has changed and how it increased. It's definitely through the kind of like a collaboration events. Mm-hmm. So especially, well, we are, the game refinery is all about your mobile market and in mobile market for years it's been just live you know live games games as a service type of a model uh, free to play games uh, service based models and so uh, like the live ops part has been always a big thing and more and more on the pc console side as well but uh, also kind of like a utilization of an ips through that has definitely mm. increased uh, uh, it's also like it's not something that just you know popped up this year, mm-hmm. but it has been slowly, slowly increasing all the time. And I feel the kind of like a scale has also kind of like a varied. So this type of a kind of like a short-term partnership. So if you are thinking about you know you make make a new game and then you have an IP and uh, get that on top of your game and have that kind of like a permanent partnership. Uh, getting an IP for that can be quite difficult, mm-hmm. uh, especially depending on what kind of company you are, what kind of a uh, game you have, and and so on and so on. And overall, kind of like uh, I would I would say that you know the difficulties are much much more bigger. But then the short term, you know, partnerships uh, where you don't have to necessarily you know tie yourself uh, for a lifetime uh, for uh, kind of like a working with this different uh, different IP, much more let's say opportunities and kind of like uh, different scales of doing this so what we have seen like mentioned this type of a uh, how to utilize uh, live uh, ip in your live ops uh, there are also a lot of lot of different kind of like a scale on it so there are you know events where it's just you know i don't know some some companies are doing just advertisements for mm-hmm. example with a celebrity for example then if we go to the actual in-game content, there are like the, the most simplest level that, okay, they have a little bit of ad- advertisement and then they have, let's say, some like bundle offers that have a, you know, skin uh, of, of, a, of a celebrity or a different brand and so on. But there is not actually any playable content. And then we can gradually go deeper and deeper, more and more content. And then we can talk about like, well, one one uh, like mega examples uh, from, from this year, quite recent one is the, like you mentioned the Cookie Run game. They are collaborating with BTS. They had collaborated with Disney, and those kind of like events. They are these like mega extra extravagances, mm-hmm. so to speak. Mm-hmm. So there are like uh, there are there are the content, there are the bundles, and then there are unique characters and skins, and there are unique gameplay modes that are narrated with the kind of like the the for example the bts one mm-hmm. uh, with the 
the the the boy band members as an example so also in that side so when you're realizing for the live ops there's such a big variety from like super super simple ones where there it's more like on like a marketing based one clearly that okay they made advertisement and then it's somehow a little bit visible in the game but there's not that much mm-hmm. but then when we go deeper and deeper in this kind of like a bigger experience it comes also this kind of like a engagement retention play as well so you're offering players something new something fresh uh to experience uh in their game compared to just you know having a different kind of like a bundle offer with the different mm-hmm. you know ux for example sure. So yeah, there's the big, big variety uh, of of scale in, mm-hmm. in, in kind of like utilization of IP uh, in events uh, as well. And overall, I would say you know uh, because there are so different IPs, there are a lot of well, so much different type of you know peoples and celebrities of different scale to the A listers to kind of like a smaller more niche uh, kind of like uh, names, so to speak. So there is also the massive scale, depending, of course, on your company and and different kind of what kind of a game you have, who, like what what kind of a IPs you are going after. There is also the big scale and kind of like a much more opportunities of different companies of every size. So you don't have to be the Epic Games Fortnite to kind of like have pretty much all the IPs in in in, in your game nowadays. It starts to seem like or. So th- there are like so much examples of so smaller companies doing something with the kind of like a, not maybe the, the biggest IPs, but smaller IPs and trying to find out this kind of like a, a perfect marriage uh, with the different IPs and, and with uh, different games. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you, you've touched on it just a bit there about like the different types of integrations, the way um, developers are working with IP is is changing. It's not just licensed games anymore. It's all these different levels of integrations. Um, what about the the types of IPs? So like, it, you know, it feels like we're seeing more and more fashion brands or, you know, it's individual characters or kind of more niche, um, you know, TV, film series, that type of thing. Uh, are you seeing a change there in the type of IP that people are using as well? Yeah, uh, that's actually also something that uh, we have data on and we are actually following. Uh, so if we look at, for example, the top top games in the the US, uh, as an example, so the biggest share of this kind of like, uh, now I'm talking about the, especially the kind of like a just licensed games first. So the games that have a kind of like a permanent collaboration, collaboration uh, with, the, uh, with the specific IP. Uh, definitely, of course, the biggest one is different kind of, you know, established game brands. Uh, so known from, I don't know, like, for example, PC or console uh, side. And, and then you realize like PUBG's and Call of Duty's and Apex Legends and uh, so on. So a bit different. So there's like, for example, those, of course, they are not in that sense collaborating, uh, but they have a, have a big IP in, 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 in-house, so to speak. And then they have made a mobile, mobile version of that. And that's, that's the biggest kind of like a IP still, mm-hmm. if you look at the kind of like a top charts uh, in, in it. But then the second biggest is definitely TV movie. So uh, different type of uh, movie or TV, TV mm-hmm. brands. Uh, uh, and then, and, and, you know, uh, utilizing that, utilizing the characters uh, of, a, of a specific IP, for example, for example, Marvel, uh, of course, everybody knows, uh, probably, especially on the mobile game scene, one of the, I would say, the best IPs, if you can get a hold of it, because uh, uh, to, uh, for many kind of like a free to pay play models, it, uh, they are all about collecting. And if we are thinking mm-hmm. about collecting and kind of like a wide variety of characters and kind of like, a, yeah, the just the simple kind of like a deepness of that IP. If we, we have seen so many examples and even the one of the, like the latest one, the Marvel Snap character, like the card game, uh, Marvel is such a kind of like a perfect IP for a game like that mm-hmm. because it's all about, you know, creating a deck, collecting characters, and which IP has so many kind of like a well-known characters than Marvel. Uh, 
none. Uh, but yeah, and then uh, it also kind of like a comes, there are some IPs that doesn't, might be a great IP, but doesn't work on those genres as well. So there are also many mm-hmm. examples of that. So games that, you know, have mm-hmm. tried to use uh, different, for example, movie IPs. One example that comes to my mind is uh, uh, there was Next Games was doing this uh, uh, kind of like a character collector IP uh, or character collector RPG uh, based on a Blade Runner IP. And if we think about the fundamentals of the IP and we think about the fundamentals of the genre and the game type, mm-hmm. it doesn't really match because Blade Runner, it's it's a great IP, but it, it's not about a wide variety of character where the character collector RPG is based on. So it never really worked out and they, mm-hmm. they already killed the game, uh, killed the game and so on. But yeah, I would say those two are the kind of like the biggest ones, but where we are seeing much more kind of like a, increase in my opinion uh, and you know based on our data as well uh is uh this kind of like a wider variety of uh brands and this kind of like a different consumer products hmm. uh whether it's uh cars or whether it's uh well cars have been always uh, always of course a big thing uh, on the game market but other consumer products like uh there have been kind of like a for example, fast food chains, uh, especially in this kind of like uh, uh, live ops format, a uh, lot of lot of them have been, you know, uh, this type of a consumer products and different types of brands that are not necessarily entertainment brands. Try starting to see the value of of kind of like a game games industry and collaborating uh, with these games. So we have started to see this type this type of a kind of like a utilization of brands uh, in different games. One example comes to my mind that, for example, Tennis Clash had I think it was this year they were collaborating actually with American Express. Uh, which is uh, which is something that maybe not you know comes yeah. to your first first to your mm-hmm. mind and most likely of course I don't know the deals uh, kind of like a, what kind of a deal it was but uh, it, at least to me it it kind of like a feels like it was probably not something that you know get your audience excited about the American Express uh, racket in the tennis class game for example but it's an actually an advertising channel for <laughs> American Express and they had that kind of a collaboration so I would say if I had to mention kind of like one type of a brand that has been kind of like a increasing in use it is this various type of other ips than the entertainment uh, ips that have really increased in in, in the mm. kind of like uh, utilization and implementations that's really cool and i i guess with the american express you it kind of feels right in, in a way that you know when you go to a tournament or if you watch a tournament there is always the the title sponsor and yeah. it, it kind of you know ties in well i think if it was a space where you know uh advertising or kind of corporate sponsors weren't part of it maybe it would maybe it would feel a little little further for the for the player um I, i'm curious like I, I think you mentioned interestingly like marvel snap works well because there's you know a deep link between the, the universe of marvel characters and, and what they're trying to do with the ccg or collectible game there and then you know with blade runner that, that obviously is much harder because the blade runner characters i guess are are less iconic to some extent. Um, you know, I wanted to flip on that. And one of the trends that I think we've started noticing or, or been talking about a lot is kind of this um, this concept of, of licensing or collaborations where it seems a little more off kilter or something that you wouldn't expect. And, and it seems mm-hmm. to be more around audiences. And, and you know, the, the first one I think of is either like Garena Free Fire with, with BTS. And then I, I know they did, I think, I think it was a collaboration with Ronaldo a couple of years ago, and they followed up with a, a BTS one. And I, I think recently we, we've also seen, you know, um, Call of Duty uh, on the, the new Modern Warfare 2 with Messi and Neymar and, and, and a few others. Like, what's your, what's your thoughts there in terms of these kind of, um, these collaborations that are less thematic and, and more seem to be aligned with just like player bases or fan bases? Like, is there anything you, you can talk about what you're seeing there and, and, and what your take is on those? Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, and, and I would say that is also a trend uh, and kind of like a more wilder, so to speak, uh, tests and, you know, like marriages. I remember when, you know, 
Fortnite started to do this uh, type of a collaboration with IPs and the first they brought some of the first IPs that they brought and there was a lot of people especially in the west people were like this is weird like uh, why why is this character or why is this IP in this game and so on but now when it's been going on for years it's nobody you know uh, thinks it's so, so weird anymore uh, so to speak and if you look at kind of like asia side that's something mm. that has been happening for so much more longer especially japan it's all about collaborations and they in there of course uh, the the kind of like a types of collaborations is also uh, they are for example more collaborating with you know different games uh, uh, collaborating between themselves and having this kind of like a synergy uh, over there, but overall, kind of like a types of uh, types of brands and types of uh, IPs, I would say, uh, to some extent, is of course you need to be sure of mm. kind of like uh, what IPs to take. But for example, the examples that you gave about you know Ronaldo being in in various other games, uh, or like actually now. You mentioned the Warzone, uh, Call of Duty, the Messi one, and that's he, right, Warzone. And and there, then then the uh, now the World Cup is on, and there are like so many World Cup events, and different players are actually utilized in different games. So Call of Duty Mobile had like uh, I think it was Neymar and uh, Paul Pogba uh, events, and then there were like Neymar was also in like this MOBA game called Mobile Legends and he was also in this kind of like a mech, mech shooter game called Mech Arena. Uh, you were able to get um, uh, Neymar in there. Uh, so kind of like a, the kind of like overlap between the brand and with an IP and especially I think it's so much more crucial uh, to think about and you need to be so much more careful when you are making a license game. So like mm -hmm. I mentioned if you make an like an character collector RPG and then you use an IP that really doesn't have that much characters ha have like too few strong characters it might be that okay this is not the genre for this IP but when we are talking about again this live upside you can you know think in so much different a wider way so that comes back mm. also to the kind of like implementations because you can use it as a, like a marketing tool that okay you have this well, of course, these big football players probably not uh, available for everyone, but you have this football player, they are maybe, you know, uh, pinpointing it in their social media. Uh, and then you also some games like like the Call of Duty, you can buy the skin, you can monetize uh, kind of like existing uh, user base on that. So I would say especially for this live stuff you can you know play mm. around you can be more creative you can try uh, try different things of course in that one as well you need to be it's not cheap to you know especially with a big ip to create something like that so you need to be careful uh but i would say it gives much more freer playground uh to kind of like uh uh, use the ip or try different ips and after all like for example this football many players who you know play shooter games they also f follow mm. football so there is the synergy uh, uh, most likely for for a big 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 audience uh, in there uh, but then yeah and then you s said the other other example of like bts and cookie run i don't know i haven't you know research the audience so to speak uh, so deeply in in that one uh, but like the first idea of a, like uh, you have a term turn-based RPG game and then you have this Korean boy band mm. group might start like first might seem that okay is there an overlap I don't know there might be an overlap uh, in the audiences so it kind of like engages the audiences but then again it can be kind of like a thing that you know try to find new audiences mm -hmm, mm -hmm. through the IP and and that's the kind of like the second approach so I would I would always in this kind of like a live ops based uh IP usage, it's always about like a, what is your end goal? Like, is it engaging your users? Is it monetizing your users? It's, is it about the retention, offering something, something uh, kind of like a new for, mm. for your existing players? Or, or is your approach, your, you know, more marketing based and, and kind of like a trying to find, find new audiences mainly. And that's, yeah, 
yeah, we could talk about these different implementations uh, quite a lot. But like Plarium, who is the company behind mm -hmm. the Mech Arena, which had the Neymar uh, collaboration. And then they have the Rage Shadow Legends, which is a really, really popular game. Uh, their approach is always this marketing driven. So they always make these high quality ads. And it, if you go actually inside the game, it's only a, like a login calendar and then you unlock the character. So a mm. little bit of that, okay, it's something new, something cool, but I, there's not actually any you know, playable content mm. uh, in, in, in the games. Yeah, it, seem, it seems like, you know, if you're building a whole game around an IP, then it's, it, there's an, a higher element of risk. You know, you've got to get it right. It's got to be thematically in line. It has to make sense for, for that IP. But if you've got a game that's performing, you've got a base of players you know, you can use that to either attract new players from a different audience or, you know, you've got the ability to engage them or, or give them some new content in a way that they can kind of pick and choose whether they interact with it as well, right? It's, it's, so I think you've got more, more flexibility and more options as well with, with I guess, a game that's, that's live and, and running. Exactly. Um, so, like, with all the data you have from Game Refinery, uh, what are you seeing in terms of the effect that all of these deals are having? Uh, is there a is there a way to measure the uplift in terms of spend and engagement? And and if there is, like, what does that look like? Yeah, uh, well, of course, like the the, the fully licensed games, uh, it's much more hard, tougher to kind of like uh, extract uh, the value of the IP from there. But especially on this again, live op space stuff, live events that the games are running. So as we have the kind of like a performance estimations uh, in terms of kind of like a downloads and in terms of the revenues, there we can see some correlations uh, naturally that, okay, the game runs, runs first of all this, this event. Uh, what is then we go a little bit deeper on that event. Okay, uh, what kind of event it is? It has a, uh, like an IP, like they're collaborating with a different IP. And then we go a little bit deeper that, okay, What's wh how is it actually built? Uh, is there like things that they are actually monetizing, or is it just this like Plarium approach that it's all about mm -hmm. engagement and marketing, uh, just adding adding a new character for free uh, for every players? And then from there we can you know of course it's always there's always because it, they are like living ecosystems, a uh, lot of things happening all the on the same time, but we can kind of like uh, try to find out correlations of for example different event performances. And if we look at that, and that's actually a really interesting mm -hmm. thing to follow and look at different events. And uh, we've been talking about these like uh, shooter games like the PUBGs and Call of Duties. And uh, overall, I would say these cosmetic monetized games in mobile, they are collaborating nowadays with different IPs all the time. And they have a all the time different you know different events with the different kind of brands so it's actually quite interesting to follow that many times the actual mechanics mm. of the events are actually really really similar that okay they might have a you know uh, some like side mode or something and then they are monetizing with exactly same like for example a gacha mechanic this kind of like a loot box mm. mechanic or is it the direct purchase you know skin or whatever uh, but when you compare this, that, okay, these are actually mechanically exactly the similar events. They have the same, you know, monetization models, uh, the whole the whole live events. And then you go and look at the kind of like a performance data. We can see quite a lot of differences. So mm. like I talked about the mobile legends, the MOBA, MOBA game, uh, they have had different, uh, these type of collaboration events. And for example, they had one with Transformers IP. That had an actually a massive, massive kind of like a bump in the revenues when 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 it was launched, but then they had a, actually just recently uh, or like few months ago they had an uh, event uh, exactly similar similar type of monetization. They had an event with Kung Fu Panda uh, of all all the all the possible brands, and if you look at the performance on that event, it actually didn't make a dent. So clearly. We can see that like difference that okay this event worked uh, in terms of performance much much more better uh, than the other one. Of course, we are not mm. familiar with the because all the all the you know these uh, different IP deals are different. Uh, what kind of deal they made, uh, how much they uh, you know pushed it. But if you look at just like in game what they were offering, the mechanics were the same. Uh, the kind of like the distribution of the of the content mm. uh, was the same. 
uh, monetization was the same, we can see that, okay, this one actually performed in terms of the revenues much more better uh, than the mm. another one. So yeah, to that extent, uh, you can go and, you know, find out those kind of like a correlations quite, quite nicely uh, in, in the platform. Cool, cool. And and at a at a market level, like generally, how, how do you see the, you know, is is there a is there a metric or like a benchmark that that people are shooting for when they're when they're you know looking with this, or is it different in every case? Like, is it just based on depending on the deal of of the license? Then they're obviously trying to increase or lower their acquisition cost and then their kind of monetization after that. Or you know, in general, like do you, do you see IP working a, to actually overcome those issues that we were talking about earlier? Yeah, uh, well, to my my understanding and my my feeling is that it's so case by case, uh, mm -hmm. and 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 again it comes back to the kind of like implementations and your goals for the kind of like a collaboration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, is it you know the monetization or engagement or retention or uh, new user acquisition? What's what's your end goal uh, for the collaboration? Uh, and then it kind of like comes back to that. So uh, it's really hard to say kind of like anything in a kind of like a bigger level. I would say, you know, it's following individual examples, individual cases, uh, uh, kind of like a trying to find out how mm -hmm. different events did, how, how kind of like the performance uh, was impacted. So I would say it's really, really case by case. Yeah depending on the goal of the of the company depending on the uh, goal of the kind of like the event yeah may, may, makes sense makes sense um, we're, we're coming up on time um, as we're doing a recap on on trends of the of the year gone by I think that's been really really informative so, so thank you for kind of covering like how it's how it's changing in the landscape um, what I did want to do is, is step back down to like a few personal favorites I mean I wanted to, to know you know and and Mitch as well um, you know, like, what's your what's your top deal that you've seen in the space this year? You know, what favorite collaboration and 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 why? That's a good question because there's been uh, so much. Well, uh, um, I, I would have to say, like, well, if I give you two, so mm -hmm. I give you the license game. I have to pick up, you know, Marvel Snap because okay. it's so well executed against the IP or like with, with the IP, with the IP in mind, uh, kind of like how to make a license game with the, with that kind of an IP, how it kind of like fits to the kind of like your game genre. It's mm. so, so well, uh, well done in my opinion. And the, the synergies of the IP and the game are uh, uh, so clear. Uh, but then if we look at on the other side of the spectrum, so we go on the live, live event side, which is, almost almost as important uh, and nowadays like mentioned uh super super uh uh kind of like uh, utilized uh, all across the genres uh, i would have to say mm, let's see uh well i would say overall uh the pop cheese hmm. uh, kind of like uh, I, I don't pinpoint any specific one necessarily from this one uh, but like the PUBG, if you follow that game and if you follow that live ops machine, it's kind of insane. Uh, they have had probably <laughs> probably like 10 different collaborations just this year. And the kind of like the, the scale of those collaborations, it's not, the, you know, the, the most simplest one. So the following kind of like how it has evolved from this kind of like just, the, you know, Battle Royale shooter with kind of like a realistic uh, uh, realistic uh, art style and a realistic kind of like mm. Uh, mm. Uh, skins and so on. And now if you look at actually PUBG Mobile, they are experimenting like one of the most pe like best performing ones that were actually with an anime uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion, mm -hmm. like old really, you know, old quite popular anime and they had a like a mega uh you know event with that with specific skins and uh, specific modes for that so but yeah PUBG, it's if you're looking for collaborations with different ips uh, that's quite 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 a machine of how mm -hmm. how much they are utilizing that and and it's one of the key things for their whole whole live operations is the collaborations with different ips 
Yeah, for sure. And I think they just announced their uh, Dragon Ball, I think, um, mm. collab for next year. Um, I, actually, it's, it's a really good segue to, to mine. I think PUBG, I think last year maybe, uh, collabed with Blackpink, which was really interesting yes, because yeah, it, it was, it was a, you know, one of those like fits that you don't necessarily think of. Like it just doesn't kind of add up when you're, when you're thinking right. of two things that go together. But I think off the back of that, I wonder if it made made it easier for the market in general. And my my favorites are actually the the work that um, the dev si- dev sisters team at Cookie Run uh, have done because I think they've they've shown the ability to work with such a wide audience. Like I know they've had I think it was the the uh, Disney Festival. I can't remember the festival's mm-hmm. name of Festival of Dreams or something. Um, but then they also you know had BTS in there. And again, it's it's showing the versatility of IP. I think you know BTS and Blackpink run in similar circles almost. And, you know, for them to be both in PUBG, but also in, in Cookie Run, I think is really interesting. And, and the way that, yeah, Cookie Run is kind of taking that model of, of IP collabs and applying it in the, in the mobile space, I think is really interesting to follow. So they're definitely mine. Mitch, what about you? Uh, I got, I'll go two. So I'll go a licensed game as well. Uh, the, the Office, was that this year? Somehow we manage. I think it was. Yeah. yeah. East side, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. it was this year. So yeah, it's this year. Yeah. I'll, I'll go to the office because I think like it's another great example of taking an IP that like how on earth do you turn the office into a mobile game and you do it by creating like this really cool sim game, right? Like it's the perfect marriage of the game mechanic and, um, you know, the core loops, like all really fitting with the IP. Um, and, and with that audience as well, like, I think it's just executed really, really well. So um, I, I also just, like, love the fact that Eastside just want to take, like, every niche kind of comedy IP of all time and turn it into a, a mobile game. So so that's really cool to see them build on that. Uh, and then the other one is uh, the, the World Cup um, integrations with Messi and Neymar and Pogba, just because I think, like, it's this kind of new frontier of like you know we were speaking about earlier i know where it's like an overlap of the audience rather than the kind of thematic um you know you wouldn't expect like you know like publicists would be going crazy like messy you cannot be running around war zone with an, a- an ak but you know like it, it's 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 a really great marriage between user base and and uh and also like timeliness as well um, cause I love the world cup. So it's just the perfect timing. Um, cool. Well, uh, just quickly then we might finish up yeah, on actually the world. Yeah. I was just about to say that actually it's quite interesting, the world cup thing, because, uh, like uh, in, in more, especially mobile games as th- there has been these big, big, uh, championship, like the last world cup, for example, there were a lot of like there were these type of events, but like the scale of them mm. compared to four years ago, so much more wider and so much more utilized. And not just, you know, the uh, kind of like a uh, collaboration with the different players and so on, but there are so many games that are having events uh, overall, like World Cup events that, okay, for example, Survivor.io is this kind of like a popular game that came this year. And they have these events where you're like predicting uh, the outcomes of the matches and then you can get something in in the game and so on. So this kind of like a timeliness uh, of kind of like a mega, mega event happening in the world is quite interesting how that is also increased. Yeah, it's like, you know, 10 years ago, the way you used to kind of create a game experience around an event was like create the game, create the lunchbox. Like you spend like two years creating the game to go with the movie release now it kind of feels like, well, we can just do a live event in an existing game. And I think it's a really cool trend that we'll continue to see. So that's a good segue into uh, let's wrap up quickly because we could talk forever. But um, where, where do you see IP-based games going in, in uh, 2023? I don't know. Yeah, I, I definitely see because of this, especially on the mobile the changes uh, that, that we talked about in, in the start of the start of the podcast. Uh, I see the value of IP bigger than ever, uh, the benefits of an IP bigger than ever. 
also in the licensed game zone scaling scaling new new games uh, having an ip it, the kind of like the benefits of that but then again on the other side of the spectrum so the live ops side uh the trend is upwards so i don't expect to see it stop because to be honest if we like i mentioned a little bit about the kind of like asia market and the collaborations there they are like in many ways ahead like i mentioned the fast food chains and if you look at for example genshin impact they had have had these insane collaborations with the different uh fast food chains with kfcs in in china and and, and so on and and then like the league of legends had a kind of like a perfume uh uh with the uh, i don't remember the kind of like a perfume brand but they, in china they had like a, i think it was league of legends or then it was the honor of kings so the 10 cents 10 cents uh kind of like a moba game and and this kind of like a massive massive kind of like a utilization and kind of like a wider thinking of an kind of like a utilization of ib and not just okay we make this license game with this IP, but then going a bit wider, of course, to the events, but then also to the kind of like a types of IPs and possibilities there. And I think also in the West, the license holders are seeing the kind of like a value of collaborating with the different uh, uh, different mobile games uh, and using, using them as a kind of like their marketing channel as well uh, is keep becoming kind of like a bigger and bigger thing. So definitely... I see kind of like a big good things for IPs uh, in the future in the mobile game scene for sure, and just ex- like expanding on, uh, on on what we already have. Awesome. Well, thanks very much for joining today. Really appreciate all the insights and the recap. Um, looking forward to a, a big twenty twenty three. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks for watching the licensing and games video series. For more content like this, subscribe to our channel or check us out at layerlicensing.com.